Hey, welcome back everyone to a video about towns in the United States where you could live, retire, exist on $1,500 a month. That's right, we're going back to a series we did in 2020. We've combined them all together. Now, since 2020 was a long time ago and living in these places on $1,500 a month, they're a little unrealistic these days. As we get to each one, I'm gonna tell you how much you should probably add on to each one of these places here in 2024. Now, this was a really popular series we had. A lot of people liked it. And when I started doing these compilation videos, a lot of people asked for this one too. So we're gonna start with the one that started the series off, which was just all through the United States. We picked like 10 from across the country. After that, we broke them down by region. Let's take a look. What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the world according to Briggs and another video about living a little bit cheaper. I get a lot of questions and emails from people looking for places to retire on a social security check, military retirement, or people that are just trying to save money for a house down payment or they got a bunch of student loans. I'll tell you right off the bat, you're not gonna find anything from California or New York on this list. Plenty of Americans are going into retirement where their only source of income is a monthly check from the Social Security Administration, which is in the neighborhood of about $1,500 a month. That's how we came up with the threshold. Where can you live for under $1,500 a month? The average worker's income is about $3,000 a month, so about double what Social Security is. And if you retire from the military after 20 years, you see about $2,500 a month if you're enlisted and about $4,700 a month if you were commissioned, meaning an officer. That's on average. What we did was find decent places in the United States where you could live on less than $1,500 a month. In all the income examples given, this should be easy to do. Now, obviously there's different expenditures that we're not counting in here. This is just the average person. This is going to be what the average person needs to eat, buy clothes, medicine, pay for housing, utilities, etc., and came up with the best towns in the US where you could live for the $1,500. If you guys really like this video and want to know about more places like this, I've got at least 50, so I could do at least five videos like this. Let me know in the comment section below. If we get enough likes on this video and enough views, we'll definitely do it because this one's kind of interesting and a lot of people ask for it. All right, let's take a look. Number 10, Detroit Beach, Michigan. Detroit Beach is a small community about 40 minutes south of Detroit on Lake Erie. 40 minutes is just far enough away where you don't get any of that Detroit stank on you. Detroit Beach gets a livability score of 88. Not bad for being so close to Detroit. Detroit Beach has a little over 2,000 residents and a crime rate that sits 68% lower than the national average. Again, being so close to Detroit, that's phenomenal. If they could just get the word Detroit out of their name, the place would be really appealing to most. Detroit Beach is almost all single family homes, but rent in this area averages around $750 a month for a two bedroom apartment. The average person can live on $1,469. Number nine, Apache Junction, Arizona. Whenever I hear of Apache Junction, I think of that movie, Bad Santa. Billy Bob Thornton played a Santa and he's just a loser, but this kid sits on Santa's lap and then he looks at him and he goes, hey, your beard's fake. And he's all, yeah, it is. And the kid's all, what happened to your real beard? Billy Bob Thornton said, the hair fell out. The kid asks why and Billy Bob Thornton said he got sick. The kid said, why again? And he, Billy Bob Thornton said, I loved a woman who was unclean. And then the kid goes, where? And he's all, I don't know, kid, Apache Junction. Anyway, Apache Junction is quietly picking up steam for retirees. It is a suburb on the east side of Phoenix. About 33% of the residents here are over 65, and their only real knock is the schools aren't the best, and that's according to Area Vibes. Everything else, their stats are great. The average one-bedroom apartment rents for just $482 in Apache Junction, so you'll have extra money to do whatever. The average monthly expenditure in Apache Junction is $1,405. Number eight, Carnegie, Pennsylvania. Pittsburgh is a nice city with great suburbs. Sure, it has some crime, like all big cities, but it has some great places to live. One of the more affordable and nice suburbs is Carnegie and its 8,000 residents. Named after industrialist, anti-labor activist, and compulsive library builder, Andrew Carnegie. Carnegie has a creek running right through town and a great livability score, 84 out of 100, like I said before. People that make more than $1,500 will have plenty of money to spend on other things, like Steelers games, if they live in Carnegie. The rent in Carnegie, Pennsylvania is $750 a month. The average person here can live on $1,400.48 a month. Not bad. Number seven, Bedford, Ohio. 
Bedford is on the outskirts of the Cleveland metro area. Forget what you've heard about Cleveland. Bedford is a good place to live. They have a livability score of 84. Oh, look, score 84. That rhymes like a poem. I'm a poet and didn't know it. Everything I say seems to come out that way. I should be a rapper. Okay, speaking of rapping, let's wrap this one up. If you're retired, I have some good news for you about Bedford. This area of the country's healthcare costs on average are 16% lower than the national average. That's good. Rent in Bedford, Ohio, on average, is $760 a month. And that helps out with your total monthly expenditure here. You only need $1,390 a month to survive in Bedford. Number six, Wausau, Wisconsin. I've never been to Wausau, but from what I've seen, it's beautiful. The stats are great. And I asked one of my Twitter followers that lives near there, he lives in Tomahawk, Wisconsin, what he thought about the place. He said, the small town feel is so strong here, you'll find it hard to believe that they have 40,000 residents. They have great festivals every summer. And he said it's one of the better places to live in Wisconsin. I asked him what about retired. He said, great. And he also said, raising a family here, it's the perfect place. He said he doesn't have kids. If he did, he'd probably move there. The Wisconsin River runs right through town. So there's a lot to do when it comes to like kayaking, fishing, all that good stuff. Rent in Wausau, Wisconsin, on average, is $657 a month. The monthly expenditure you're going to need is $1,350 a month. That's it. We're getting lower. Rent here is only $654 a month. Number five, Logansport, Indiana. A lot of towns in Indiana are getting a second look in the last year or two. Retirees and people that work remotely are finding places to live in Indiana's towns. Mostly because it's cheap, Indiana is filled with good people, and it doesn't have many jobs, and that helps make everything cheap. So if you're bringing a job with you or you're retired and you really don't need one, Logansport is a perfect place for you. The livability score is 77, which isn't the best on this list, but it's it's respectable. Logansport has under 20,000 residents, two rivers, and a really low cost of living. They have a little bit of crime here, but it's not crazy. And stop typing. Everyone always seems to think that their town is the worst when it comes to crime. Don't get street cred in the comment section of a YouTube channel. Logansport is not that bad. And stop typing again. You don't need to live there to know that. Don't fear stats. Don't fear numbers. The average rent in Logansport is $630 a month. That is solid. The total monthly expenditure you're looking at to live in Logansport, $1,301. Not bad. Number four, Holly, Michigan. Holly's livability score is a little bit lower than some of the other ones on this list again, but it's so cheap it sort of makes up for it. Their livability score is 76. You can survive here on $1,280 a month, and the rent will only run you about $700. This town is small and adorable, with only a little over 6,000 residents. The thing that sucks about this place is the two major cities near here are Flint and Detroit. Not great options. Sort of like having to choose between a toothache and hemorrhoids. Number three. Coopersville, Michigan. Coopersville is about 20 minutes west of Grand Rapids, and the people here seem to love this place. The livability score is 84, and it has decent schools and very little crime. Like all of Michigan, if you don't like cold winters, that may be a deal breaker for retirees. Retirees hate the cold weather. I'm not the retirement age yet, but I hate the cold weather myself sometimes. It starts to ache a little bit, but you get through it. I still like it better than the heat, though. Rent here is pretty low. $620 a month will get you a nice one, two-bedroom place. One bedrooms I saw as low as 500 here, so kind of nice. Your total monthly expenditure in Coopersville will be about $1,266. That's cheap. And with Grand Rapids right there 20 minutes away, it's not a bad place to live. Number two. Blair, Nebraska. Blair, Nebraska is one of those towns we have all across America that probably wouldn't be there if it wasn't for a train. Blair was even named after John Inslee Blair, who was a giant businessman in the rail industry way back when. Blair is just off the Missouri River, and it's surrounded by farmland about 30 minutes north of Omaha, Nebraska. This place is a nice place to live. Very little crime. Schools are decent. It gets cold in Nebraska, let's face it. It's no Arizona. Again. Blair has just about 8,000 residents. They think they'll crack it in the 2020 census, but it has around 8,000. Now, this place is pretty inexpensive to live here. Rent is only $650 a month on average, and your total monthly expenditure, what you're going to need to live here, is about $1,257 a month. That's it. Now, I keep saying a month because... If I don't, people will ask, well, what's that 1257 Is that a month or is that a year? Or I get ridiculous questions like that all the time. I'm not even kidding. It's kind of scary sometimes. 
All right, before we get to number one, do me a favor, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, become a, you know, productive member of our little community here at World According to Briggs. It would be greatly appreciated. All right, on to number one. And number one, Turtle Creek, Pennsylvania. Having the coolest name on the list, you have this little suburb outside of Pittsburgh called Turtle Creek. If you look at it from a satellite, it looks like the whole town was built around this rehab center at the top of the hill. But the town's been there much longer than rehab was ever a thing. Turtle Creek has been losing population since the 1950 census. Yeah, every single census, they've lost like 14%, 21%, 16%, 5%, 7%, and the last one, they lost 12%. That's why this place is so cheap. People are moving out. And it's a nice place to live. The average rent in Turtle Creek is $450 a month. The livability score in Turtle Creek is 82 and their average rent is $450. This is a great place for retirees. About a quarter of the residents of Turtle Creek are 65 years and older. What it costs you to live here is about $1,190 a month. Just under $1,200 will get you by in Turtle Creek, Pennsylvania. All right, let's start in New England. This one was kind of hard to do because New England's kind of expensive and it's hard to find places where you could survive on $1,500 back then. Now, I'm sure it's pretty close to impossible unless you're living in a van down by the river or a cardboard box of some sort. Let's take a look at New England. All right, let's find you a new place in New England. Number 10, Central Falls, Rhode Island. Central Falls is a suburb in the Providence metro area with about 20,000 residents. It's not the greatest part of Rhode Island, but it's not the worst. It's not the cheapest, but it's definitely not the most expensive. It also just barely made the cutoff for this list. Central Falls is the only place from Rhode Island that you get today because it's frickin' expensive in the ocean state. Central Falls is on the Blackstone River. And as one person put it, this isn't where I wanted to end up in life, but it's not that bad. So it's, I mean, that's kind of a nice review, maybe. Who knows? Rent here on average for one bedroom is about $825 a month. To live comfortably in Central Falls, you're going to need exactly $1,500 a month. Like I said, barely made the cutoff. Number nine, Springfield, Vermont. Springfield is located in the southeastern part of Vermont on the Vermont-New Hampshire border. If you're traveling on Interstate 91, take exit 7 and follow Route 11 west into Springfield. The Black River runs right through the center of town. Springfield is a beautiful New England town with old brick buildings and trees everywhere. They do have some great old buildings. This isn't one of them. This looks like some old factory or warehouse that went out of business sometime before Ferris Bueller took his day off. Springfield has about 4,000 residents, and I'm sure they're all still pissed off that the Apple Festival got canceled this year because of the pandemic. If you don't mind cold winters, Springfield is a great place to live. Rent on average for a one-bedroom apartment is $790 a month. Now, I've seen some that are a lot more expensive than that, but that's their average. And you could live here comfortably on $1,490 a month. And if you like fishing... This is a great place to retire. Number eight, Lisbon Falls, Maine. Lisbon Falls is a small town of just over 4,000 residents on the Andrew Scoggin River. The thing I like about Lisbon Falls is it has some of the lowest crime stats I have ever seen. They're next to no crime in this place. The town is famous for its Moxie Days. It's a celebration of a soft drink called Moxie, which is sold at a corner store by a man named Frank Anacetti. I believe that's how you pronounce the name. He's famous. He's like the Moxie guy. The store's official name is Kennebec Fruit Company, but it's commonly referred to as the Moxie Store. Sadly, it's now permanently closed. Frank passed away in 2017. I did watch this one video where Stephen King used to hang out there when he was waiting for his ride after school while he was in high school. He went to Lisbon High. Anyway, this is another place they say has great fishing. I've never fished there, but they say it's good. If you want to live here, rent on average for one bedroom is going to run about $768, and you could live comfortably here on $1,475. Number 7. Berlin, New Hampshire. Berlin sits in a heavily forest region on the Androscoggin River. This town was built on lumber and paper mills. They had a paper mill employing most of the residents for decades. In the early 2000s, the paper mill went bankrupt and a lot of people were left unemployed. They never really recovered from that. These days, they're transitioning to green energy production and they have a prison up the road, so it employs some of the people. Don't head here looking for a job. If you work remotely or are retired, they'd love to have you. If you want to rent here, you're only looking at $745 a month on average, but you might as well look into buying a house. A livable house that needs a little work will be 
be under $100,000 in Berlin, New Hampshire. I'm not even kidding. They have some that are livable, and yeah, you will have to put some paint on it, maybe fix a few things. You can get for under $70,000. You only need $1,460 to live comfortably in Berlin, New Hampshire. Number six. Newport, Vermont. Newport, Vermont is a lake town not too far from the Canadian border. Newport is on Lake Memphremagog, which is a lake that crosses the Canadian border. About 75% of this lake is in Canada. I always like border towns for retirees. Most need medication that costs double in the United States versus Canada, so you're just a short drive from cheaper meds. Side note to that one, it has gotten easier to get medications from Canada in the last few years. But that one's a political football, so who knows what it's going to be like in a couple years from now or 10 years. If you look at downtown Newport, you'll think that there's no way this place could be a cheap place to live. It is. Rent on average is $725 a month for one bedroom, but you might as well just look into buying again. $150,000 will get you a livable house that needs a little work. I saw some that are under $400,000 that are on the lake. Lake house for under $400,000. That's hard to pull off. To live comfortably in Newport, you need $1,450 a month. Number five, Adams, Massachusetts. Up in the northwest corner of the Codfish State, you have the town of Adams, Mass, and it's over 5,000 residents. Like Rhode Island, you only get one town in Massachusetts because the state, for the most part, is very expensive. Since the 1970 census, Adams has had an ever-shrinking population, and that normally means the cost of living and housing is going down. But if you drive down Park Street, which is their main street there, you will see a beautiful New England town and think to yourself, there's no way you could afford to retire there. Looks are deceiving on this one. It is very affordable. If you want to rent a place, the average one bedroom apartment's going to run you about $680. You only need $1,435 to live comfortably in Adams, Massachusetts. Number four, Littleton, New Hampshire. Sitting on the Connecticut River near the White Mountains, you have Littleton, New Hampshire, and it's almost 5,000 residents. Like most New England towns, this is a nice looking place. Littleton is surrounded by forest, and it looks like if everyone left for a year, it would be reclaimed by nature, and you probably'd have a hard time finding it from the air. Really, this place just has trees everywhere. It's totally green. I mean, right at the edge of the town. If you like trees and the outdoors, Littleton may be worth a look for you. This is another one that's really nice looking, and you probably think just by looking at it, you can't afford to retire here. You can. The average rent in Littleton is $650 a month, and you could actually live comfortably here for $1,420 a month. Not bad. Number three, Machias, Maine. Machias, Maine is a little town not too far southwest from the Canadian border at New Brunswick. It's home to the University of Maine at Machias, and it's 800 or so undergraduates. Here's a fun fact. The original name for that school was the Washington State Normal School. So, yeah, that's not normal, first of all, and it's nowhere near Washington State. I'm sure it has something to do with President Washington, but it's weird. Machias is best known as the site of the first naval battle in the American Revolution. Machias has been losing population since the 1990 census and currently sits at a little over 2,000 residents that would be happy to see some new faces in town. If you want to live here, rent. They don't have a bunch of apartments or any, hardly, but they estimate that it is around $550 a month on average rent for one bedroom apartment for this area. And to live in Machias comfortably, you only need $1,400 a month. Number two, Millinocket, Maine. Millinocket was first settled in 1829 by Betsy and Thomas Fowler and their family who cleared land for a farm. Then in 1894, a train showed up and the place started growing. And it continued to grow up until the 1970s when they started losing jobs. They've been losing people ever since. Millinocket is a nice little town, and it was the setting for the movie Bluebird, starring Kylo Ren. This town has decent stats across the board, except for schools. Their stats, uh, they're middle of the road. Kind of meh. Nothing special. But they have no crime and plenty of cold weather. They get cold here. As one local described it, she said, The winters get so cold you hope your husband fattens up for the winter so you don't have to. I thought that was nice. Rent in Millinocket, if you know you could find rent here, is $547 a month on average for one bedroom. And you only need $1,400 a month to live comfortably in Millinocket. And before we get to number one, don't forget to hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Become a member of our little community. Really helps out the channel the more subscribers we have. All right, on to number one. And number one, Castleton, Vermont. 
Castleton had a population of 4,717 people in the 2010 census, but it is estimated that they have lost a couple hundred cents. We'll know at the end of the 2020 census when that's all completed. This isn't a place you move to looking for work. This is a place you move to to enjoy the great outdoors and a nice relaxing life. They have forests all around this town and a good sized lake for boating, fishing, or whatever. As far as the stats go, other than jobs, Castleton's a really nice place, statistically. As far as the people go, they all seem nice other than a woman named Janice. A couple years ago, I talked about a town not too far from here called Rutland. She took offense to what I had to say and explained she grew up in Rutland and now lives in Castleton. In her email, she was trying to say that if she ever saw me again, she was going to give me a bloody nose, but I don't know if English is a second language to Janice. But basically, her email came out sounding like she was going to... Let, let me keep it PG here. She made it sound like she was going to have intimate relations with me until I got a bloody nose. I told her I didn't think that was possible, but if my wife was okay with it, I was willing to try in the name of science. Never heard back from Janice. Castleton University is located here, with roots dating back to 1787. They have the original medical school for the Green Mountain State, which was chartered here in 1818. The building's still there. It's kind of neat. Castleton is a great place to retire or just live if you can work remotely or you're retired. Rent here is a little bit more than some of the other ones on this list at 626 on average a month, which they don't have many places to rent. That's just for the area basically. So take that for what it's worth. But you could survive in Castleton for 1350 a month comfortably. All right, here we go with the mid-Atlantic states. Are you thinking about retiring or just moving to the mid-Atlantic region of the United States? If so, that's what we're looking at today. Where in the mid-Atlantic can you live or retire for under $1,500? First things first, what is the mid-Atlantic? There are a few different maps on this one. Some say Pennsylvania, New York, Maryland, Delaware, New Jersey are the mid-Atlantic states, while others include the Virginias, which are also lumped in with the South sometimes. Today we'll be including the Virginias since they got skipped on the Southern video in this series. And a quick note, New Jersey Jersey is in the mid-Atlantic, but it didn't make the list. Any place that you could live for under $1,500 wasn't that nice of a place, or it didn't have around 1,000 residents or more, which is what we're shooting for here. So to recap, why are we doing $1,500? Well, this is how we figured it. Out of all the standard retirements, social security only, civil servant, military, social security was bringing in the least monthly, which on average is about $1,500 a month. We aren't adding up all the expenses, just rent, food, utilities, clothing, you know, just the basics. These are designed to give the average person an idea of what it might cost if you move to one of these places. You know, if you don't have a car, you don't need to add that in, but if you do have a car, you want to add your insurance, it's different for everyone. The basics are rent, food, utilities, and clothing. All right, let's see where you can retire or just live on the cheap in the mid-Atlantic region. Number 10, Angola on the Lake, New York. Angola on the Lake is a hamlet on Lake Erie, about 30 minutes south of Buffalo. Angola on the Lake is a county designated area with the town of Angola just inland a little bit. Both have similar stats, so you could live at each place, but Angola on the Lake is a little bit better because you got the lake right there. This is a great place to live in the spring and the summer. Winters can get rough in this part of the country, as we all know. I mean, this is upstate New York, so it can get a little rough. The livability score here, though, is 80. That's solid. And the rent in this area is estimated to be around $775 a month. Now, some places on this list, like Angola on the Lake, don't have apartment buildings, but real estate websites still give them an estimate of what it would be if they did. I include this because it gives you a sense of how expensive a place would be without throwing a whole bunch of extra numbers at you. You can get by in Angola on the Lake for $1,500 a month. Barely made the cutoff. And according to one of my relatives, there's a neat place. I've never eaten there, but there's a neat place called Connor's Hot Dog Stand that's in Angola on the Lake or right next to it. It's apparently pretty good and it's always packed. So try it out if you go there to visit. Number nine, Long Neck, Delaware. Long Neck is another census designated place in Delaware on the Indian River Bay. A lot of the homes here have waterfront property and a lot of them have docks too and their own boats and things like that. They have almost 2,000 residents that enjoy a livability score of 81. A good amount of the oceanfront homes here are the manufactured type homes. They look really nice, but they're manufactured. Some people don't like that. Okay, 
But this is an out-of-the-way place, and they don't have jobs in this area, so working remotely or being retired, those are your two options for living here. Now, they don't have any apartments for rent here either, but the estimate is if you rented a one-bedroom apartment here, it would be $710 a month. You can get by in Long Neck, Delaware on $1,490 a month. Number 8. Bowling Green, Maryland Bowling Green is an unincorporated community and census-designated place, again, in Allegheny County, Maryland. As of 2010, it had a population of just over 1,000 residents. It's right outside of Cumberland, Maryland. And it is nothing like Cumberland, Maryland. Cumberland sucks. Bowling Green is a nice small community of just over 1,000 residents, like I said. Almost 25% are in the retirement age bracket. And it's on the north branch of the Potomac River. So it's got a lot of things going for it. It's it cold and stuff like that. They also have a nice prison right down the road. It's called the Western Correctional Institute. It has Yelp reviews. I'm not even kidding. The people seem to think it's a nice place and the guards are pleasant. I don't know about that. I don't want my guards being pleasant. Shouldn't guards be horrible and mean? and have Yelp reviews where people talk about how he found his prison hooch in the toilet and took his shank and stuff like that. Number seven, Wise, Virginia. Out in the hills of Western Virginia, you have almost 3,000 residents that call Wise home. It was originally incorporated as the town of Gladeville in 1874. The town's name was changed to Wise in 1924. Wise is named after Henry A. Wise, the last Virginia governor before the American Civil War. The town's also home to the University of Virginia's college at Wise. If you like the great outdoors, wine, and the Civil War, move to Wise. Drink some wine, do some hunting, hiking, biking, fishing, canoeing, and camping. All can be done while drinking wine, but hunting isn't advised. It's never a good thing to, you know, be drinking a whole bunch of wine and out with firearms. They never seem to go good together. Wise goes deep in history and is the site of a Civil War battle. They have a nice livability score of 82. If you rent here, which they don't have a ton of apartment buildings, but it is estimated that their rent for a one bedroom apartment is $640 on average, and you can get buy in wise on $1,452 a month. Number six, Celeron, New York. Celeron is a village on Lake Chautauqua in western New York. It is part of the town of Ellicott and sits on the western boundary of the city of Jamestown, New York. This is also where Lucille Ball lived during her teenage years. This town is very proud of that. There's a Lucille Ball Desi Arnaz Center in nearby Jamestown, and they have a park named in honor of Lucy with a couple of statues. One of the statues looks just like her, and it's great, and it's perfect. The other one looks like the sculptor may have never seen a picture of Lucy before he started sculpting her. This is a nice place to live if you could handle the cold. This part of New York gets extremely cold during the winter, but during the summers and the spring, it's a beautiful place to live. The livability score is 81 in Celeron, and if you want to rent here, the average rent here is $623 a month, and you could get by on $1,450. Number five, Ferndale, Pennsylvania. Ferndale is a borough of Johnstown, Pennsylvania's metro area with around 1,600 residents, one of which his name is Les, and he questions my sexuality because I'm a Cleveland Browns fan. At least, that's what I think he's trying to convey. There are so many grammatical errors, I find it exhausting to read his lengthy emails. It's almost like you need a decoder ring from him, or as he put it, a decoder rang. Anyway, other than less, this is a nice place to live. It's about an hour and a half east of Pittsburgh, and it has a solid livability score of 82. Their stats are pretty decent here. Across the board, rent in this area on average goes for about 620. That's their median rent price. And you can survive here on $1,447 a month. Number four, Parisburg, Virginia. Parisburg was founded in 1808, and it was named after George Paris, a local landowner who donated a 50-acre patch of land to be used for a town that might be growing around the county courthouse that was just put up. This is another town that, if you like the outdoors and clean air, give this one a serious look. The New River flows right by town, and the Appalachian Trail goes right through town. This, like so many other small towns in Virginia, is a great place to raise a family or retire, either one. They have a nice livability score of 83, and their median rent price is $595 a month. You could survive here on $1,398 a month. Not a bad place to live for that kind of money. Number three, 
Cambridge Springs, Pennsylvania. Now, I love Pennsylvania. This is another good small town. Cambridge Springs is a nice place to live and it's very affordable. The entire town needs a facelift and a fresh coat of paint, but other than that, it's a decent town. Employment numbers are their weakest stat and the employment isn't that bad compared to other towns in the area. I mean, they got a prison in town just about. The French Creek runs through this rural town that sits less than an hour from Lake Erie. If you want to live in a place that time moves a little bit slower, this might be the place for you. This is a very affordable place to live. Rent here goes for $8.85 a month, but they don't have a whole bunch of apartments. You might as well buy here too. They have a lot of decent homes that maybe need a, again, a fresh coat of paint and a little work. They go for like $78,000, $80,000. That's it. They have a livability score of 81 and you only need $1,398 to get by in Cambridge Springs, Pennsylvania. Number two, Despard, West Virginia. Now, I think that's how you pronounce it, but in West Virginia, they have so many different ways to pronounce things that's very localized. I'm going to get it wrong and I'm going to be corrected, I'm sure. West Virginia is getting better as a state. I'm we're talking the whole state right now. The people here are great and they always have been. This whole state has just been dealt some really bad hands in the past couple decades. Almost the entire state is affordable enough to be on this list. The tough part is finding A, a place that has enough residents and B, not a ton of poverty. Nothing wrong with being poor, I'm not slamming the poor, it's just all the extra problems kind of makes people not want to be around that kind of atmosphere. Despard is a town in West Virginia with a population of just over a thousand residents. It's in Harrison County and living here offers residents residents a sparse suburban feel and most of the residents rent their homes so there's a lot of renters here unlike a lot of the other places on this list that don't have many rentals this place actually has them many retirees live in despard and that's why we picked this one over 43 percent of the residents here are of retirement age so if you are looking to retire on a really really tight budget this is something you want to look at really all of west virginia is something you want to look at beautiful land decent people if you don't need a job it's a good place to live you know I mean, you're retired or let's say you work via the internet and you can find a town in West Virginia that has solid internet. It's a good thing to look at. But everything else is good. They have a livability score of 82 and the median rent price here is $539 a month. You only need $1,325 to live in Despard, West Virginia comfortably. All right, before we get into number one, don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't. That really helps this channel out. Be part of our community. We'd really appreciate it. All right, on to number one. And number one. Knox, Pennsylvania. Knox is a borough in Clarion County, Pennsylvania, about an hour and a half north of Pittsburgh. Here's the thing about Pennsylvania. I've spent a lot of time visiting small towns in Pennsylvania over the last couple of years. 90% of them are great places to live. This is one of those. Stat-wise, their only knock is amenities. They're a little bit out in the sticks, so they don't have things like Walmart and they do have a place called the Pizza Shop, though. I imagine they sell pizza there. I mean, they don't have any fancy name like, you know, Pizza Hut or Giordano's or some Italian name. It's just called the Pizza Shop. How much thinking went into that name? From what I've read, it's pretty good. I've never eaten there. The employment numbers here are decent, which is odd for being such a out of the way place. They got decent job numbers. That's kind of strange. They have a little over a thousand residents and they take care of this place. It's hard to find a rundown home in Knox, Pennsylvania. The livability score is 82 and their median rent price is $483. You could get by in Knox, Pennsylvania on $1,300 a month. All right, heading to the left side of the country, the Western United States. Let's take a look. What is going on, everyone? Welcome back to the world according to Briggs and another video on where you can live in the United States for under $1,500. I say in the United States because there's plenty of countries in this world where you could live on $1,500 for like five years and have some change left over. This is the second video in this series. If this is your first time to this series, I'll give you the rundown on why we came up with $1,500. Plenty of Americans are going into retirement where their only source of income is a monthly check from the Social Security Administration, which is in the neighborhood of $1,500 a month on average. The average worker in the United States makes about double that, around $3,000 
$1,000, and if you retire from the military after 20 years, you see about $2,500 a month if you're enlisted, and about $4,700 a month if you're commissioned, meaning an officer. So the lowest being $1,500. If you slip into any of those categories, which most of you should fall into one of them, today's list is about towns in the western United States where you only need about $1,500 a month to live comfortably. Let's see what we found. Number 10, Abilene, Texas. Almost three hours west of Dallas, you have the city of Abilene. Established as a cattle shipping point on the Texas and Pacific Railway in 1881, the city was named after Abilene, Kansas. Abilene has just over 100,000 residents and a livability score of 76, that's out of 100. It's had a better livability score in the past, but they've lost some jobs in recent years, so this is probably better suited for the retiree types or people that work remotely. Rent in Abilene will run you about $810 a month for one bedroom. You'll need about $1,490 to live here comfortably. They barely made the cutoff. They have a little crime, but nothing crazy. Their heat can get up there, but not terrible. Number nine, Ammon, Idaho. Ammon is a suburb near the foothills and really sort of in the foothills on the east side of Idaho Falls. This is a nice, safe town that I'd recommend to anyone thinking about moving to Idaho. I know two different couples that moved here years ago from California, like in the early 2000s. The couple that I still talk to said that it's great and they wish they would have moved there sooner. The other couple I don't talk to anymore because the guy owes me money. Never loan a friend money. Give them the money if you can before you loan it to them, because in the end, you're just probably going to lose a friend and your money. Ammon has a livability score of 87, and the rent on average for a one-bedroom apartment is $781. That's not bad. You only need $1,470 to live comfortably in this jewel of the gym state. I'm going to copyright that. Jewel of the gym state. Before their tourism people grab that. Number eight, Blythe, California. Yeah, you heard me right. I said California. But Blythe isn't the California you see on TV. This is in the middle of the desert, and actually it's straight out the 10 on the Arizona border. So, yeah, it's a little bit out there in the California outback. Blythe isn't my cup of tea because I hate the heat, and Blythe has a lot of heat. Like, your fake eyelashes will melt off your face type heat. That's how one girl explained it. The best part of Blythe is the Colorado River. It's right there. It runs right along town. It separates California from Arizona. So that gives you a lot to do. A lot of people there are river people. It's a river town. Blythe feels like a small town, even though it has over 20,000 residents. The only real knock, if you don't mind the heat, I should say, is they don't have any jobs. It's They just don't. There's none out there. This is a retirement place, or like I said, it's probably best suited for people working remotely or retire types. The good news is rent here is only $714 a month on average for one bedroom, and you're only going to need $1,465 to live comfortably in Blythe. Their livability is kind of low. It's 67, and that's because of the job thing and their schools aren't the best. That's according to a couple different websites. Number seven, Clarkston, Washington. Now we're getting into some cheap rent. Clarkston was first settled in 1862 and was officially incorporated on August 14, 1902. The name Clarkston is a reference to William Clark of the Lewis and Clark Expedition. Right across the Snake River in Idaho to the east is Lewiston, Idaho, named after Meriwether Lewis. I love that. That's like this little cool piece of geographical trivia of the United States. Now, they have about 7,500 residents living in this little town on the Snake River, and they all really seem to like it. The livability score is 73, and you only need $1,425 a month to live here. A one-bedroom apartment will only set you back $655 a month. Number six, Del Rio, Texas. Del Rio, Texas is a solid option for anyone that doesn't mind the desert life. It is a really great option for the military retirees that might be watching this. Laughlin Air Force Base is just to the east of Del Rio. So if you've got PX and commissary privileges, life is even cheaper for you. The livability score here is outstanding. It's 84, with the job market being the only knock. It's not terrible, it's just not great. Now here's the good news. Rent for a one-bedroom apartment in Del Rio is only $633 a month on average. That's cheap. You only need $1,410 a month month to live comfortably in Del Rio. Mexico's not too far from there, right across the Rio Grande. There's some farmland in between the Rio Grande and Del Rio. It's a nice place. I've been through there on the train. I have a friend from there, military friend. He still lives there. Actually, he lives out by the lake now, but he grew up there. He loved it. I think mostly loved it because his family was there, but it's a nice city. Number five, Burley, Idaho. 
Burley is about an hour east of Twin Falls on the Snake River. This is another river town. They always have something going on on the Snake River here. Just so you know, this part of the river is very calm, almost lake-like. It gets a little crazy after the dams they have down river with rapids and waterfalls and all that nonsense. Around Burley, this is a great place for like boating, wakeboarding type things. Burley has a little over 10,000 residents and a 79 livability score. Rent on average here is $620 a month. You'll need about $1,400 to live comfortably in Burley. That's not bad at all. They have very little crime in Burley and plenty of things to do. Number four, Pendleton, Oregon. Pendleton is one of the better towns in Eastern Oregon. This is the part of Oregon that doesn't have many trees, baristas, protesters, or much rain. They get rain, don't get me wrong, just not nearly as much as the Portland area does. This is a great little Eastern Oregon city. They have almost 17,000 residents, and most of their stats are pretty good. Their employment isn't the best, and their schools aren't the greatest, but they've got plenty of things to do. The cost of living is really cheap, and they don't have much crime. It'll run you $615 a month to rent one bedroom here, and what you need to survive here and live comfortably is only $1,400. Number three, Hawthorne, Nevada. Now, we've talked about Hawthorne before, and a subscriber named Carlos Hernandez reminded me of this place. So I looked it up, and it fits the criteria for this in a big way. It has a military base called the Hawthorne Army Depot right outside of town. That's the main source of income for the town, the base. It's where everyone works, the ones that do work. They also have Walker Lake, which is why we talked about it before. Supposedly, there's a secret alien base entrance below the surface of the lake. Yeah, I know, it's weird. There's apparently this whole network of tunnels where these aliens live there, and some guy who who's an alien expert, claimed he worked for the government and <laughs> had a, a shootout with aliens underground one time and that's how he lost his fingers. Or he was playing with fireworks. We're not really sure. Now there's no apartments here, but homes rent for less than $800 and you can actually buy a livable home in Hawthorne for as low as $65,000. Yeah, if you buy one for $150,000, you're living like a king. You'll need $1,290 a month to live in Hawthorne comfortably. Save up your money because you run into an alien, maybe you can purchase one of their laser guns from them. Number two, San Luis, Arizona. This city was established in 1930 with the opening of a Mexico-U.S. border crossing. In the last 20 years, it has seen a serious population increase, going from just under 2,000 residents in 1980 to 20,000 in 2005. Right now, they're sitting on a little over 25,000 residents. Jobs are hard to come by in San Luis, and so are good schools. I guess, if you look at the stats. You look at some other stats, you realize that the crime rate is very low. Even though they keep finding tunnels from Mexico in the area, the crime rate is really low. It's actually 50% lower than the national average. Their violent crime rate is 90% lower than the national average. Now, if you want to live here, you better like the heat, and it's a very dry area of Arizona. Rent on average is about $590 a month, and if you want to live comfortably here, you only need $1,275. That's not bad. Put up with a little heat, live cheap. And before we get to number one, don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe if you already haven't. Become a member of our little community here. It'd be really appreciated. Share this on your social media, all that good stuff. All right, on to number one. And number one, Brigham City, Utah. So I was going in a cheaper being the best until now. Brigham City is still cheap. It's not as cheap as, say, the last three. It's just a great place to live, and, and that kind of overshadows it being a hair more expensive. North of Ogden, you have almost... 20,000 people that call Brigham City home. This is a quiet town that has almost zero crime, great air quality, clean and well-maintained streets and houses, decent schools, and a low-cost living. If you're into bird watching, that's a big thing here. Brigham City gets a livability score of 75. Rent will set you back about $620 a month on average, and the average person only needs about $1,310 to live comfortably here. This is my top pick for the best places under $1,500 in the Western states. So what was your favorite? Let us know in the comment section below. All right, now to where I currently live, the Pacific Northwest. Let's take a look. Today we're looking at the Pacific Northwest, which includes Oregon, Washington, and Idaho. 
We already covered Washington and Oregon when we did the West Coast, I get that, but people wanted more, so we're going by regions and looking at other cities that fall into that category. This is the fourth video in this series. If this is your first time to this series, I'll give you the quick rundown of why we settled on 1500. Plenty of Americans are going into retirement where their only source of income is a monthly check from the Social Security Administration, which is in the neighborhood of $1,500 a month. The average worker in the United States makes about double that, and if you retire from the military after 20 years, you see about $2,500 a month if you're enlisted and about 4700 a month if you're commissioned those are averages okay so if your check is like 2490 you know it's we're looking at averages so the lowest is 1500 we aren't adding up all your possible expenses we're only doing rent food utilities and say clothing just keep that in mind we aren't looking at medical insurance car payment all that other stuff these are designed to just give the average person an idea of what a town or city will cost you to live there. All right, let's see what we found out. Number 10, Prosser, Washington. Prosser, Washington is a town of almost 6,000 people on the Yakima River in the heart of the Southeast Washington wine country. They have too much wine here, really. Of course, if you're one of the women I know from Southern California, you just yelled blasphemy at your screen because to you, there is no such thing as too much wine. It's like too much Christmas. Prosser is a great town with good stats and the average rent on a one bedroom apartment here is $705. You will pay $1,500 a month to live comfortably in Prosser. If you haven't watched the other videos in this series, living comfortably means you aren't going hungry and your utilities aren't in danger of getting cut off every month. You can pay your bills and live comfortably in Prosser on $1,500 a month. Number nine, Preston, Idaho. Preston, Idaho is a town of just over 5,000 residents just off the Bear River and about 30 minutes north of Logan, Utah, pretty close to the border. If you live in Preston, you are surrounded by farmland and good people. They have almost zero crime here and plenty of community type events, including the Idaho Festival of Lights, which starts the day after Thanksgiving and goes until December 31st. They don't have a bunch of apartment buildings here, but various real estate and government websites come up with an average for a one bedroom apartment for most towns and cities in the United States. Preston's average rent on a one bedroom is $680 a month. I looked at the apartment buildings that they do have there and that seems a little expensive for most of them. They're a lot cheaper. I saw some that were for like 580 and 550 a month. Oh well. Anyway, you only need $1485 to live comfortably every single month in Preston, Idaho. Number 8, La Grande, Oregon. Out in Eastern Oregon, you have the town of La Grande and its 13,000 residents. La Grande is home to Eastern Oregon University, which has been there since 1929. Go Mountaineers. The only stat that isn't good in La Grande is employment. It's not terrible. It's just not great. They don't have a bunch of great jobs here. For those of you who could bring a job or you're retired, this is a great place, especially for those of you who like to fish, camp, or hike. La Grande is a wonderful place to call home if that's what you're into. Plenty of it in the surrounding area. If that's not your thing and you're looking for a wild nightlife, don't move here. You'll cry and spend a lot of your free time online looking at YouTube videos about cruises in Las Vegas. A one bedroom apartment on average goes for about $6.76 here and oddly enough you'll only need $14.76 to live comfortably in La Grande, Oregon. Number 7. Connell, Washington Connell, Washington is another place that doesn't cost a bunch to survive. I'm sure part of the low cost of living here has a lot to do with there isn't anything to do. You save a lot not having a reason to leave the house to be entertained. But if you're looking to save money and live an uneventful life, rent a U-Haul and head to Connell, Washington. I have a relative, she lives not too far from there, north of there. Anyway, she said the Burger Factory, which is a restaurant there, doesn't look like the best place to eat, but it's really good. So she said stop by there and try it out if you're in the area. She actually lives in a town called Ritzville, like putting on the Ritz, you know? Ritzville is not ritzy at all. They've only got like a thousand people. It's out in the middle of nowhere. Anyway, Connell's stats are solid until you get to schools and employment. Again, not terrible, just not great. They have very low crime and a cost of living that could be considered dirt cheap. A one bedroom apartment goes for $667. You only need about $1,471 to live comfortably in Connell, Washington. Number six, Moscow, Idaho. Russia and Idaho both have a Moscow. The cool thing about the Moscow and Idaho is the secret police don't show up at your house in the middle of the night and make you disappear. Moscow is on the Idaho-Washington border, about 45 minutes north of Lewiston, Idaho. We talked about Clarkston, Washington in a previous video. Lewiston, Clarkston, Lewis and Clark, they're right across from each other. One's in Idaho, one's in Washington. Anyway, that whole thing is about 45 minutes south of here. This is a town that has become a popular migration point 
point in the last couple of years. The University of Idaho is within the city limits and it doesn't have a lot of jobs within the city limits. Everything else, stat-wise, is outstanding in Moscow, Idaho. This is a good-sized city with about 25,000 residents and plenty to do. The whole job thing, like I've said many times before, if you're bringing a job with you, working remotely, or you are retired, Moscow is a solid option. Especially if you want to be in a city versus some small town. This is a good place to live. A one-bedroom apartment, on average, is going to be about $658 a month. And to get by here, you only need $1,450 a month. Not bad. Number five, pay it, Idaho. Payette is north and a little west of Nampa, Idaho, on the Snake and Payette River. Originally named Boomerang, yeah, I'm not kidding, but this was when it was a construction camp for the Oregon Short Line from 1882 to 1884. Logs were floated down the river to sawmills at the camp, and they produced railroad ties. After the completion of the railroad, the settlement was moved upstream to its present site and was incorporated in 1891 as Pay It. No more Boomerang. I think they should have kept Boomerang. Sounds kind of cool. This is a quiet little town of about 8,000 residents. The only stat that doesn't get a good grade here is the schools. So if you're retired, chances are your kids are too old for 6th grade math and you don't have to worry about it. But if you do have an adult child struggling with 6th grade math, maybe move someplace with better schools. That's my advice to you. Rent here is only about $644 a month for a one bedroom apartment and you only need $1485 to get by comfortably in Payette, Idaho. Number four, Baker City, Oregon. South of La Grande, Oregon, you have the town of Baker City and it's almost 10,000 residents. It was named after Edward D. Baker, the only U.S. Senator ever killed in military combat. Yeah, Spanish-American War. I guess he never got that memo that you only vote to send young men to war when you're a Senator, not actually go with them. But hey, at least he did his duty, right? And he got a town named after him. The Oregon Short Line Railroad that we talked about earlier came to Baker City in 1884, spurring some growth. And by 1900, it was the largest city between Portland and Salt Lake City. It was also a major trading hub for the region. In 1910, Baker City residents voted to shorten the name of the city to just simply Baker. The name change became official in 1911. Another vote in 1989 restored it back to Baker City. Baker City has decent stats all around. And you aren't too far from mountains, lakes, and rivers. If you're the outdoors type, this is a great place. It's surrounded by farmland. There's no other real big cities near it. So it's a nice place to relax and enjoy a nice quiet lifestyle. The rent here for a one bedroom apartment is estimated to be $625 a month and you only need $1,412 a month to live comfortably in Baker City. Number three. Umatilla, Oregon. Umatilla is a small community on the Columbia River that one time had to be moved back a little. Really. In the 1960s, they had to move the entire town further away from the river. The United States Corps of Engineers determined that it would be likely flooded out and residents would be washed down the Columbia if the dam that's just upriver had failed. Between 1965 and 1968, the town was completely rebuilt south of the railroad tracks and, you know, out of danger. All the buildings on the original site were purchased and demolished. You could still see the street grid from Google Earth. Kind of interesting. Umatilla is a great place to save money, not make money. They don't have many jobs here, so if you can work remotely, perfect place, or if you're retired, it's worth a look. They don't have anything to rent here, really, like apartment-wise, so it's estimated that it would be about $605 a month if they did, but livable homes here only go for in the neighborhood of 200000 To get by in Umatilla comfortably, you need $1,400 a month. That's it. Not bad. Number two. Glens Ferry, Idaho. Not too far from Mountain Home, Idaho, you have a great little town on the Snake River called Glens Ferry. This is another one of those places that doesn't have rentals, but they still give an estimate, and that estimate is $592 a month for one bedroom on average. Take that for what it's worth. In Glens Ferry, you shouldn't be renting anyway. Homes here are estimated to be about $98,000. They only have two for sale right now. They go for $140,000 and $170,000. This is a perfect place for someone that likes to fish and relax. This is a small community, and it's it's beautiful in this area. The river's right there. It's great. They have a nice little boat launch. You got a fishing boat. You want to get on the Snake River? This place is great. And it's not terribly far from Mountain Home, which has a Walmart and all the good stuff you need. To live comfortably in Glens Ferry, you only need $1,330 a month on average. And before we get to number one, don't forget to hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell notification. That helps out the channel that lets you know when we've uploaded. Watch it right away. It helps the stats and the channel grows and we make more videos and we all live happily ever after together. All right, on to number one. 
And number one, Rupert, Idaho. Rupert is a town of over 5,000 residents between Pocatello and Twin Falls, Idaho. On our first video in this series, we talked about a town not too far from Rupert called Burley, Idaho. Very similar, just Burley's on the river. Rupert was founded in 1906 on the announcement of the construction of a nearby dam. Not long after electricity came to Rupert from the dam, Rupert began to grow. Rupert was one of the first places in the world to have electric street lights. How weird is that? Who would have thought a couple hundred farmers and town folk were jonesing for street lights? Moving on. Rupert is a great town of almost 6,000 residents, and it has solid stats all around. The cost of living is almost 25% lower than the national average, and you only need $1,310 to get by in Rupert, Idaho. Now, they don't have any apartment buildings or anything like that, so their estimate is a one-bedroom apartment would go for $565 a month if they had them. Again, take that for what it's worth. But Rupert, Idaho is the best place to live for under $1,500 hundred dollars a month in the Pacific Northwest. All right, let's take a look at the upper Midwest. We didn't do the Midwestern one for some reason. We did the upper Midwest, which was Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, things like that. For some reason, we didn't do the Midwest, which is Iowa, Nebraska. Don't know why. Anyway, let's take a look. On these lists, we have looked at the cost of living, state taxes, and things like rent on a one-bedroom apartment. Some towns don't have apartment buildings, but different websites like the U.S. Census Bureau still have an estimate on what rent would be for this area if they had apartments. And I put that in these videos just to give you an idea of what it might cost to live in this town. We're not adding up every expense. We're just doing rent, food, utilities, and clothing. We aren't looking at medical, insurance, car payment, etc., etc. These are designed to give the average person an idea of what it'll cost you to live here. All right, let's see what we found in the deep north. Number 10, Baker, Montana. We start off our list in the great state of Montana. Statistically, Baker is a great place to live. Schools don't get the greatest rankings, but everything else is solid. If you're an active outdoor type, Baker is worth a serious look. Baker has year-round activities, including fishing at Baker Lake, which is in the center of town, like in the center of town, hunting for deer, antelope, pheasant, wild turkey, and rabbit. Probably don't want to do those in the center of town, but maybe go out a little bit. I don't know why someone would shoot a rabbit anyway. Anyway, moving on. Snowmobiling and cross-country skiing are great. Right here in the winter, Baker was built along a transcontinental rail line near where the railroad created a lake, which is Baker Lake, to supply water to steam locomotives back in the day. That's how they got this lake in the middle of town. They have just under 2,000 residents, and they have a very low cost of living. Like most places on this list, they don't have a bunch of apartment buildings because almost all the states on this list in particular are very sparsely populated, so... Anyway, but different real estate websites give an estimate on what rent would be in in a town, even if they don't have apartment buildings and stuff. It's a good gauge of how much it costs to live someplace without bogging the video down with a whole bunch of numbers. Rent here is estimated to be about $635 a month if they did have those apartment buildings, and you could survive in Baker on $1,480 a month. And homes are so cheap here, you might as well just buy one, not rent. Number nine, Springfield, Minnesota. Springfield is a small town of about 2,000 residents, about two hours southwest of Minneapolis on the Cottonwood River. This is a great place for families, not just the retired types. They've got a low cost of living, great school scores, and things for families to do. I mean, look at this. This is a small town, but they have a good looking community pool and a skate park. It's kind of nice to see in such a small place. It's an indicator that they're actually focused on family life here. Like all towns on this list, winters can be harsh in Springfield. I mean, it's called the Deep North, after all. You gotta expect some cold winters. Rent in Springfield is estimated to be about $567 a month, and you only need about $1,457 to live comfortably in Springfield, Minnesota. Number 8. Warren, Minnesota Warren, Minnesota sits on the Snake River about 30 minutes from Grand Forks, North Dakota. This is a town of only 1,500 residents, and it has great stats across the board. This is the type of town that has so little crime, I'm sure the local police deal with livestock issues on half their calls. This is another town that has some things that surprise me, like a hockey rink. Well, actually, that one didn't surprise me. This is Minnesota, after all. What is surprising is they have a golf course, tennis courts, and a community pool. 1,500 residents is normally too small to have things like that. I mean, all of them. You might have one or the other. This one has tennis courts, golf course, pool, a bunch of baseball fields. It's great. Great 
sign for a small town. The average rent on a one-bedroom apartment in Warren, Minnesota is $559 a month, and you could survive here on $1,456. Not bad. Number seven, Cavalier, North Dakota. If you don't mind the cold, this is a good one. Cavalier, North Dakota is less than 30 minutes from the Canadian border and about two hours from Winnipeg. So if you're retired, there's your cheap meds right there. The Tongue River runs through town, which is not at its biggest point here to have some water flowing through town. Cavalier does have some apartments and rent on average is about $531 a month. This town has been losing residents in the last few census. They only have a little over 1,200 residents now, which is down from 1,500 in the 2000 census and down from 1300 in the 2010 census. I'm sure a lot of that has to do with the employment numbers. They're not good here. The good news is that keeps cost of living down and everyone lives on the cheap, so to speak. So if you're retired or you work remotely, they'd be happy to have you here. You'll probably be happy to live here because it's only about $1,448 a month to live here comfortably. Number six, Roundup, Montana. I had a fever once and the only prescription was this campground near Roundup, Montana. Roundup, Montana is a town of just under 2,000 residents with the Muscle Shell River to the south. This river has some good fly fishing. I found a bunch of videos of fly fishing on different parts of this river on YouTube. Looked really good. Golf and fly fishing are two of the most common things I hear retired men say they want to do in retirement. Good news, they got both. The Pine Ridge Golf Course is right outside of town. Again, it's Montana. It can get cold. So, you know, I mean, it is what it is. But... This is a nice town to live regardless. The stats are solid once you get past the schools and they have a really low cost of living. Rent here, they estimate on average, is $524 a month and you only need $1,440 to live here comfortably. <laughs> Number five, Halleck, Minnesota. Halleck has some of the best stats on this list. It would probably be number one if it was a little bit cheaper, but it's really nice, so it's going to be a little more expensive, but not terrible. This is a smaller community with about a thousand residents and a whole lot of peace and quiet. Out by itself in the northwest corner of Minnesota, just over 20 miles from the Canadian border on Two Rivers. That's the name of the river, Two Rivers. It's not... I'm saying there's two rivers here and not telling you the name. That's what it's called. Two rivers. Halleck is a place for world-class bird watching, camping, and golfing. Snowshoeing, cross-country skiing, and snowmobiling. That's what their website says. This looks like a great little community. They have an incredible video that I watched and it just looks like a wonderful place. I've never been to Halleck. I'd love to go. Love to just visit this place. It looks like such a nice small town. Again, their biggest knock is going to be the cold weather. If you can handle the cold weather, this is a great place to live. Rent here goes for about $515 a month and you could survive on $1,440 in Halleck, Minnesota. Before you go, make sure you master the one finger wave. And that's not a middle finger thing. It's a hello with just your index finger while you're driving. They all do it. <laughs> Number four, Platte, South Dakota. Platte, South Dakota is a little spot on the map just east of the Missouri River and about two hours west of Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Statistically, this is another great town. If you fish, even more so. They have a buttload of YouTube videos of dudes fishing for walleye if you search Platte, South Dakota. They also have a bunch of locals that made several rhythmless dance videos. I didn't understand what was going on. I watched like 30 seconds of each and had to move on with my day. It was weird. Anyway, this is a great place for retirees that want to have things just slow down a bit and relax. This is a nice, quiet town with like no crime, no nothing, and it's cheap. If you want to rent a place here, which there's not many of, but like we said, it's their average, $510 a month is their average here. You could survive in Platte, South Dakota on $1,437 a month. Number three, Madison, South Dakota. We talked about Madison not too long ago in another video. This is such a special town, it deserves a second round, and they also have a white buffalo statue out in front of a car dealership that I'm jonesing to take a selfie on. Statistically, it's a good place for anyone to relocate to, and it has over 7,000 residents, so it's not some small burg out in the middle of nowhere. This is a good-sized town. People that visit here or move here have a tendency to never leave. If you want to rent a place here, the average for a one-bedroom apartment is $505 a month. That's the average. They do have some other ones that are a lot more expensive, but that's their average. And you only need $1,436 to survive comfortably in Madison, South Dakota. Number two, Cooperstown, North Dakota. Cooperstown, North Dakota is a nice, quiet town in the middle of North Dakota. It's kind of far away from everything. Schools are the only thing besides weather that really isn't ranked as good in Cooperstown, North Dakota. 
They have a nice little downtown, which surprisingly doesn't have half the shops boarded up. That's a sad sight in most of the small towns these days. Main streets across America have far too many empty storefronts. Cooperstown Main Street, which is called Burrell Avenue, or Burrell, whatever you want to call it, appears to be in really good shape. Got a couple banks, a pizza place called Pizza Ranch, coffee place, a theater. They got all the things you need. They're about an hour and a half northwest of Fargo, and that's the biggest city around them. Everything else is just little tiny nothing towns. And then you got Cooperstown. Cooperstown, kind of small itself. It only has about 1,200 residents. You want to live in Cooperstown, you're looking at paying their average. They don't have a bunch of apartment buildings here, but they figure it's about $479 a month to rent a one-bedroom apartment here if they had a bunch of them. And you only need $1,419 to live comfortably in Cooperstown. And before we get to number one, don't forget to give the video a big thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Want to get to a million subscribers someday? And don't forget to leave a comment and tell me which one of these on this list was your favorite. All right, on to number one. And number one, Harvey, North Dakota. Yep, we're staying in North Dakota with Harvey. And the best stats on this list. Everything is graded good or better, with employment being the only thing that was graded average. Harvey and its 2,000 residents are a little over an hour southwest of Devil's Lake, North Dakota, and north of Bismarck, North Dakota. This is another one that is far away from everything just the way some of us like it. They have the Cheyenne River right outside of town, which when the water levels aren't incredibly low, they have good fishing. A lot of fishing videos on YouTube about fishing the Cheyenne River. They have a community pool, a golf course, and some extremely clean air in Harvey, North Dakota. Harvey, North Dakota is a really nice place to live. And the reason Harvey is number one on this list, their average rent for a one bedroom apartment is $427 a month. Yeah, and I looked at what they have available right now, they have one two-bedroom apartment for rent right now that is only $395 a month. You could rent a house here. It's not the best house, but $740 a month. Not bad. You could live extremely cheap here. To live here comfortably, you only need $1,395 a month. Say you have student loan debt. This is a great place to live and put some money away. All right, now we get to the one that was the most popular in this series, the Southern States. All the other videos have like 1.2 million, 1.5 million. This one has like 2.7 million uh, views as of right now. So that's pretty cool. Let's take a look. Today's list is decent towns in the Southern United States where you only need about $1,500 to live comfortably. Let's see what we found. Number 10, Kingston, Tennessee. Kingston has its roots in a fort called Southwest Point, which was built just south of present-day Kingston in 1792 on the Clinch River. At the time, this was as far southwest legally the white man could go. And stop typing. I just said white man. I could have said Euro-Americans, European settlers, blah, 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 blah. Everyone knows what I'm talking about. Being offended isn't a skill. I just had some jackaloon cry because I said having to wear a Chuck E. Cheese outfit and dance for minimum wage was humiliating. He failed to understand that is is humiliating. Ask any 18 year old whose friends found out that that's what they do for a living. It is humiliating. Coincidentally, there's no Chuck E. Cheese in Kingston. You gotta go towards Knoxville for that kind of action. Kingston has about 6,000 residents, low crime, good schools, a livability score of 84, and a very low cost living. Rent here for one bedroom, there's not a bunch of apartments, but on average, it's 702 a month for one bedroom apartment, and you only need about $1,490 on average to live comfortably here. Number nine, Frankfort, Kentucky. Frankfort is the capital of the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Yes, they're a commonwealth, not a state. It's not much of a difference. If living around people from your generation that remember black and white television matters to you, I got good news. Almost 20% of the population of Frankfurt is over 65. Frankfurt isn't just for retirees, though. They have plenty to do, the crime isn't terrible, and neither are your job opportunities. They're not the best, but they have some work there. Frankfurt has about 25,000 residents, and rent on a one-bedroom apartment will run you about $697. That's not bad for a capital city. Your total monthly expenditures? on average is $1,470. That's not bad. Frankfurt's a nice town. I was there years ago, but it's been many years actually, probably over 20, but it was a nice town. I'm sure not a lot has changed. Number eight, Englewood, Florida. 
Englewood is another city that's heavy on retirees. It's in between Fort Myers and Sarasota on Lemon Bay, which is on the west side of Florida, on the Gulf side. Over half of the city's residents are retirees. That's how a lot of the towns in Florida are. They have a livability score of 77, and the rent on a one-bedroom apartment, on average, is $800. They have some that are so much more expensive, but they have a lot that are lower, so the average is $800. That's a little bit higher than other rents on this list, but thanks to low taxes and other factors, you only need about $1,461 a month to live comfortably in Englewood. Now, what's weird about this place, I want to call it Englewood. I grew up in Southern California. We have a place called Inglewood. It's spelled with an I. I see this, Englewood, and it's weird. I've heard several people call it Inglewood, and I've also heard other people call it Englewood. Yeah, I don't know if you can tell the difference. There's a difference there to some of them. Who knows? Moving on. Number seven, Benton, Louisiana. Benton is about 30 minutes north of Shreveport, Louisiana. This is a nice rural town with great stats other than employment. So if you're retired or you're bringing a job with you, you're going to work remotely, this is a perfect place. If you're looking for a job, probably not so much. There's no apartments in Benton, but this area on average, one bedroom goes for somewhere around $684 a month. They did get a good tornado here about 20 years ago, so that's kind of scary. On April 3rd, 1999, a powerful F4 tornado made its way through town, killing six people and injuring 90. A mobile home park located south of town was hit pretty hard. I don't know what it is, but whenever you see a tornado, it's always a mobile home park just got trashed. They've got some kind of thing that draws in tornadoes. Who knows? Anyway, to live here comfortably, you're going to need about $1,420 a month. Not bad. Number six, Russellville, Arkansas. Okay, once you get past the fact you're living in Arkansas, this is a nice option to relocate and save some money. It doesn't have the best crime stats, but it's not crazy bad, and it's getting better. Their year-over-year -year numbers are trending in the right direction with crime. This is one of the bigger cities you can live in for under $1,500 a month. They have almost 30,000 residents, and Russellville is right on the Arkansas River, not too far from the Ozark National Forest. Rent here is only $672 a month on average, and you can live comfortably on $1,400 a month. Number five, Dalton, Georgia. Dalton, Georgia is almost an hour and a half north of Atlanta and almost 30 minutes south of Chattanooga, Tennessee. So you have two good options if you want to go to a bigger city for some reason. Dalton is a good sized city with almost 35,000 residents, and it's not a good place to be looking for a job. That's one of their only knocks is they don't really have jobs. Their crime is decent, Schools are okay, their cost of living is very low, and if you're looking for cheap rent, you've come to the right place. The average rent here for a one bedroom is $647 a month. That's not bad. You only need $1,375 to live here comfortably. Number four. Calhoun, Georgia. Staying in Georgia, we have the town of Calhoun. Calhoun is home to about 17,000 residents and some well-preserved turn-of-the-century southern architecture. This is a nice-looking place. They got some really nice buildings on the main street. Calhoun has gained population every single census since they showed up on the census count in 1880 with 510 people. Most of them were related to a dude named Jebediah, and he had a really cool beard. Calhoun is in between Dalton and Atlanta, and they have nice middle-of-the-road stats until you get to the cost of living and housing. Those are both great. Rent here will run you about $632 a month on average, and you'll need about $1,370 here to live comfortably and enjoy Calhoun and their livability score of 73. Number three, Mockville, North Carolina. Right off the bat, I gotta tell you, both the Carolinas were hard to get on this list. They have some really cheap cities and towns, but almost all of them suck pretty bad. The good ones are too expensive. Both states have some incredibly nice, they're just a little too spendy for this list. Mockville, on the other hand, is a solid choice. Stats are good across the board, nice American Main Street, and the standard issue old folks in front of the ice cream place, America. If you want to live in this Norman Rockwell type town, rent will run you about $613 a month on average, and you're looking at about $1,350 a month to live comfortably. Mockville is about an hour north of Charlotte. Mockville has a livability score of 71. Number two, Decatur, Alabama. 
Decatur is one of those cities that make you wonder where all those Alabama stereotypes come from. Like if you just landed in Decatur and no place else in Alabama, you're all, what is everyone talking about? People aren't hicks. Decatur is a nice southern town that is growing and advancing while not getting too far from its southern roots. In other words, this town doesn't have many rednecks. If you do see them, they're probably just in town to pick up some hog pellets. This is the first place on this list to get below $600 in rent. You can expect to pay around $590 for a one bedroom apartment in Decatur. Throw in very low grocery costs, and this could be a good place to save some money. To live comfortably in Decatur, Alabama, you need about $1,340 a month. Rent is $590, like I'd said. And the livability scores? 74. Not a bad choice. And before we get to number one, don't forget to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, join our community. Really helps out the channel when we got a whole bunch of subscribers and you leave comments and give the videos a big thumbs up. All right, on to number one. And number one, Columbia, Mississippi. I'll wait for you to get back into your chair and close your mouth. In case you think you misheard something, I did say Mississippi. The Magnolia State is in the number one spot for a few reasons. Columbia is another nice southern town with the main street lined with old, well-kept brick buildings. For the most part, they have some stinkers along Main Street, but for the most part, it looks pretty nice. Columbia was officially incorporated on June 25th, 1819, becoming the fourth municipality in the entire state. It served as the temporary capital of Mississippi from November 1821 until early 1822. This is also the birthplace and where Walter Payton was raised. Sweetness, one of the greatest running backs ever to play the game. Yeah, he was born and raised here. Columbia is about 45 minutes west of Hattiesburg and not too far from the Louisiana border to the south. The average rent in Columbia is $585 a month and to live comfortably here, you only need $1,250. That's it. There's a lot of things wrong with Mississippi. Being expensive isn't one of them. I mean, yeah, sure, down by the Gulf, you can get into some expensive places, but Mississippi is a very inexpensive state to live in. All right, let's take a look at the Southwest. Let's talk about the Southwest. What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the world according to Briggs. My name is Briggs. I travel, I make videos, and I once had a gorilla at a Texas zoo throw his droppings at me. Not totally sure why he did it or why I just told you about it, but there it is. The man next to me said, what'd you do to him? Still don't know. Today we're continuing our series on where you can retire or live on $1,500 a month. If you haven't seen the other ones, here's a quick recap. Why are we doing $1,500? Out of all the standard retirements, Social Security brings in the least monthly, and that's $1,500 on average. We aren't adding up all the expenses, just rent, food, utilities, and clothing. Just the basics. These are designed to give the average person an idea of what it might cost to live in each town or city. Not getting all in depth with what your car insurance might be and what your medications, that varies for everyone. This is just the basics. Okay, so the Southwest region is Texas, Arizona, New Mexico, and Oklahoma. Let's see what we found. Number 10, Welton, Arizona. Welton, Arizona is about 30 minutes east of Yuma, and it's in the middle of the desert. If you like heat and want to live in a very affordable town, this is a good option. Like so many of the towns on this list, they might not be as good looking as, let's say, some of the New England towns we've looked at. That's just how it is out west. There's some nice places. They're just fewer and far between compared to the East Coast. That doesn't say anything bad about the people or the towns. It's just a climate and dust thing. The heat just weathers pretty much anything you own there. Weldon has a livability score of 70. That's not the best, but it's not bad when you look at some of their good stats. What's really bringing them down is schools and amenities. There's really not anything to do and the schools don't get the best marks. They have very low crime and a very low cost of living. Now, here's another disclaimer. A lot of these places may not have apartments in them, but different real estate sites give them an average what rent would be for a one-bedroom apartment at these places. And we use it here as a gauge to kind of give you an idea of what you're looking at if you do move there. But if there were a whole bunch of one-bedroom apartments in Welton, Arizona, the average rent on a one-bedroom apartment would be $637 on average. This place, the homes are so cheap, you might as well just buy one. But you can get by in Welton, Arizona on $1,496 a month. Number nine, Olmedo, Texas. 
Olmedo is a census-designated place in the Brownsville metro area with about 1,200 residents. This is a small town that's growing. They've been building some nice homes in and around Olmedo for a few years now. Olmedo has decent stats on everything but jobs. Crime is low, homes and rent are affordable, and you're not too far from really great tacos. The whole Brownsville area, for some reason, just has great taco shops everywhere. It's weird. Some of the best tacos are there. Anyway, in general, the best Mexican food you can find is going to be in Texas, in my opinion. But Brownsville really takes it up a notch. This is a great place for retirees. Warm weather, very inexpensive state to live in, and Olmito is a very inexpensive place to live. Rent here will only run you about $597, and you can actually get by on $1,487 dollars a month. And that's not bad considering this place has a livability score of 77. Number eight, Shady Point, Oklahoma. Shady Point is technically part of the Fort Smith, Arkansas, Oklahoma metro area. I say technically because A, Fort Smith is in another state, and B, it's a good distance away from Fort Smith. So I'm not sure how they can consider it part of the metro area, but okay. It just seems strange to me. But that's what they say it is, so we're going with it. The population of Shady Point was 1,026 people in 2010, and they think they lost about 10 people since, so they're a little bit smaller. This is another town that if it wasn't for the train, it probably wouldn't even be a town. A lot of this town's history goes hand in hand with the comings and goings of trains. Crime is non-existent in Shady Point. If someone gets a DUI, it's probably going to make the local paper here and talked about for months after. The crime rate in Shady Point is actually 99% lower than the national average. The Poto River runs right past town, which is a branch of the Arkansas River, and they've got good fishing. Apparently really good catfish there, and in that area, they get some record-breaking trout. Maybe not this river, but some of the rivers around there, they get some good-sized trout. They might get them in the, the Poto River, too. I just didn't see much about that. The livability score in Shady Point is 77, and not like they have any apartments to rent, but it's estimated that a one-bedroom apartment here would go for $592 a month, and you only need $1,487 to get by in Shady Point, Oklahoma. It's a nice, quiet place to live. Number seven. Clayton, New Mexico. The Chimarron cutoff of the Santa Fe Trail brought some of the first Americans through the Clayton region way back when. Everyone's heard of the Oregon Trail, but there's a few other trails in this country's history that aren't as well known. The Santa Fe Trail is one of them. It was first established in 1821 after the Spaniards got kicked out of Mexico. It connected Franklin, Missouri with Santa Fe, New Mexico. Clayton is in the northeast corner of New Mexico, not far from both the Texas and Oklahoma border. They don't have much to do here in Clayton, but it's really cheap. And it's got good stats other than schools. What really sticks out about them is their cost of living is so low. The estimated average rent on a one-bedroom apartment is $531. You could get by here on $1,477. And they have a livability score of 75. Number six, Eric, Oklahoma. Eric was established in 1901 as a farming community on what would become the edge of the Dust Bowl during the Great Depression in the 1930s. Yeah, this is like the heart of the Dust Bowl. These days, it's an incredibly cheap place to live. Eric sits a little over two hours west of Oklahoma City, and it's about the midway point if you're driving to Amarillo, Texas from Oklahoma City. There isn't much to Eric. There's a place with a bunch of hubcaps. That's kind of neat. But it is a nice, tight-knit community on the Oklahoma Prairie. They don't have crime, and the schools in the area get good grades. It's a little light on things to do. I mean, other than saving money by not doing stuff. You could get by here on $1,471 a month. They have a livability score of 79, and if they did have apartments here, they would go for about $520 a month for one bedroom. Eric, Oklahoma's main thing is if, if you want to live cheap, this is a good place Place to give that a go. Number five, Mountain View, Oklahoma. Staying in Oklahoma, we have the small town of Mountain View. Not sure what mountains they're viewing. It's Oklahoma after all, and it's pretty flat. This town sort of doesn't make the cutoff of 1,000 residents, but they have a bunch of farms on the outside of town, and it's got really great stats, so I'm putting them in it. They've got around 800 residents that live in this nice little town. Not a lot goes on here. If you move there, you might be the talk of the town for like a month. It's a wonderful small community. No crime, good weather, clean air, and a very low cost of living. All those good things give Mountain View an 86 livability score. They don't have any apartment buildings, but the estimate is that if they did, they would go for $508 a month. You could survive in Mountain View, Oklahoma on $1,425 a month. Number four, 
Cameron, Texas. We talked about Cameron before in a Safest City video. Cameron is safe, it's clean, welcoming, and it is close to one of my favorite cities in the country, Austin, Texas. Cameron is a little over an hour northeast of Austin, Texas, with the little river flowing just to the south of town. Cameron is named after Ewan Cameron, a Scottish Highlander who fought in the Texas Revolution and was a member of the Meir Expedition, or Meyer Expedition, however you want to pronounce it. This was during the war with Mexico. This is one of those great Texas towns that has like a Christmas parade, barbecue shootout, steak and stein wine fest, warehouse of horrors during Halloween. And it's cheap. The estimated rent on a one-bedroom apartment in Cameron is $500, and you only need $1,390 to get by in Cameron. Now, they do have a livability score of 75, and that's really because they don't have any jobs there. If you are bringing a job with you, they'd love to have you. If you're retired, move to Cameron. It wouldn't be a bad choice. Unless you hate Texas, then don't even think about it. Number three, Spur, Texas. Spur, Texas is a small town about an hour east of Lubbock, Texas. This is one of those small towns that the big event for the week for the whole town is the high school football game. Sure, the team only has 20 players, and one of them reminds you of McLovin from the movie Superbad, but it's Texas football, so they love it. Go Bulldogs. This is where Marshall Applewhite was born. He's that crazy cult leader from Heaven's Gate cult. They aren't a cult anymore because they all decided that a comet was actually a spaceship they all wanted on. And the only way to get on said spaceship was to kick the oxygen habit in a multi-million dollar mansion near San Diego. Other than that loon, Spur is a great community and it's very affordable. If you can get used to that Texas heat, this is a great place to retire. Or if you could take a job with you, work remotely, this is a great place to save some money. The estimated rent for a one-bedroom apartment in Spur, Texas is $462. You could get by in Spur, Texas on $1,375. That's not bad for a place that has a 77 livability score. Number two, Santa Rosa, Texas. Santa Rosa is a small community of just under 3,000 people, about 15 minutes northwest of Harlingen, Texas. Santa Rosa is about 25 miles from the Gulf of Mexico, which is a really good thing. This is South Texas. It gets hot. You want to head someplace and spend a weekend out of the heat? The Gulf of Mexico is where you go. March, November, and February are the most pleasant months in Santa Rosa, while August and July are the least comfortable with temperatures just, you know, the type of heat where you stick your head in the refrigerator for about five minutes every day? Yeah, every hour sometimes. Yeah, that gets rough. Santa Rosa is a farming community with not many farming jobs. That and amenities are the only things really wrong with this place. Everything else is kind of nice. They don't have much to do and they don't have a lot of jobs. So perfect for people working remotely and retirees. The cost of living here is insanely low and the housing is also very low. So that's the big attraction to moving to Santa Rosa. The median rent here is $419. You could survive here on $1,370 a month. That's not bad for a place that has a livability score of 73. All right, before we get to number one, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, join our community, and hit that little bell notification so you know when we upload it. All right, on to number one. And number one, Bullhead City, Arizona. At number one, we have Bullhead City, Arizona. This isn't the cheapest on the list, but it has some other things that put it at the number one spot. I've been kind of ranking them going from the more expensive to the cheapest. This one kind of falls in the middle, but it has so many other things we're putting it here. Bullhead City is where California, Nevada, and Arizona meet. The Colorado River separates both from Arizona and Laughlin, Nevada, and its casinos are right across the river from Bullhead City. For retirees, this is a dream come true. Gambling, hot weather, boating, golf, what more could you ask for? No, really. What more would you want in a retirement town? Let us know in the comment section below. We're working on another list, and your suggestions might come into play. But back to Bullhead City. I've been there many times. Really, for the most part, I've been to Laughlin and the river, but I've been to Bullhead City more than a few times. It's not a bad city. If you can take the heat, like I said, but it's the best in my opinion. The median rent in Bullhead City is $710 and you could survive here on $1,450 a month. Their livability score is 70. So Bullhead City is number one in the Southwest of the United States to live under $1,500. All right, that's our list. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Like I said before, don't forget to subscribe. Hit the like button. Tell us what you thought. Everybody have a great day. Be nice to each other. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out. Have a great day. Be nice to each other.